Hey guys, this is Allison from Alley Cat Creations. How are you? Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And if you get anything from my work, I'll connect the dot. Mind blown moment. An epiphany. You resonate with everything I do or not, but you enjoy my channel. And you like the books I read or you found a new author to explore a new book. Please consider supporting my work and all the links will be plugged at the bottom of the description. Very soon, I will be looking for a matrix job because I need to be working in order to maintain. I am not going to end up where I was. And as much as I love to do this, I don't really make anything for it. I'm not monetized. I don't sell products. I'm going to try to sell some of my artwork, but that's, you know, that's a, it's not something that brings in money every day. Right. So I'm going to try other methods, but at this time I have to start looking for a job. So it's definitely going to take me away from everything. Um, the house is slowly coming together. I just need to paint and put some shelving up and finish unpacking and then job hunt. So I want to get as lot and as many of these as I possibly can in for our enjoyment. The Hermit's Journey. Many of us have been on this really lonely road. I'm sure I have been. Um, I do have people I speak to. I do have friends, but very many and few and far between. Writing my, I don't have a partner. I'm not, I'm falling asleep next to my cats. I'm doing this move basically squarely by myself. I'm doing all the labor. I'm doing everything just about alone. So it's not, easy to walk through life having to make and not having another person to bounce an idea off of it's not easy when someone's not in your situation to comprehend it it's it's, it's you have to go through some things by yourself to understand another person's perspective when it comes to what we are all going through on a cosmic scale with the great awakening with the DNA upgrades, with the truth. This is where the hermit's journey really takes focus. It's emerging from the cave. There's a lot of illusions. There's a lot of reflections. But once you actually see the light, now you want to start waking other people up. But how do we do that? So we go through, thus spoke Zarathustra, to see how a very clever hermit is speaking to other people trying to seed little crumbs for them to become critical thinking and aware. And of course, when a lot of these things were written, it's in a different time frame. But I'm noticing with a lot of the books from the 1800s through the early 1900s, it's like speaking of now. With Manly P. Hole's work, The Way of the Lonely Ones, it's taking us through character building. It's how you're a hermit, and then you have these experiences that make you stronger, that connects you to nature, that you're creating above and beyond what you are. You're merging yourself with source. Or whatever you're resonating with, gods, goddesses, de deities, whatever you want to call your one and only, or the many. It's all part of source, by the way. Um, we're seeing how to look at the inner self and reflect what we are in totality. This story that I'm going to read my notes from is amazing. It's called The Guardian of Light. And once again, it's about a hermit isolating 
and it's it's a good one and i feel like at this moment in time before i get into the depth of this I really want you to insert your own self in this story. Just like I asked uh, if you watched my powder video, the movie powder, to insert yourself with your traumas, your past in with that movie because it's gonna help you see a lot further. This is gonna do very similar. In a town with no name, long forgotten, a lonely one dwelled, seeking out the riddle of life. Well, we all do that, don't we? He prayed often, asking for the light that can dispel the shadows from the hearts of men. Though with the time passing, it left his soul in darkness. Truths his spirit longed to know it always eluded him. How many of us have walked through this entire existence seeking things out that we'll probably never know? But we seek them out anyway because we're curious. The lonely one took a walk away from his little home in the valley, walked toward mountains kissing the sky. While looking up at a bright star appeared shining at the highest point of the snow covered range. The voice within whispered he should climb that snow covered peak. His higher self is now talking to him. The voice explained it's that very light he sought out but could never find. Of course, he started climbing the mountain to reach what had always eluded him. The beauty and splendor round a sense of quiet, calm within as conditions were dangerous and hard to traverse. As he got closer, the curiosity, curiosity of what was the light, where it was coming from, filled his mind. So as we traverse through our lives, there are things that we got to go through in very treacherous and dangerous conditions in order to seek the end outcome, which should be a happy ending. Not everything ends in a happy ending, sadly. Again, we sign up for these experiences to learn and grow. Earth is a school. Dolores Cannon speaks of this, and a lot of other people speak of this. You're here for an experience. You signed up for an experience. You programmed. This is a simulated matrix. We signed up for these things, to have these experiences. And they're not all that pleasant, but it's because we need that soul growth from those lessons. If you pick up what they are. It took him a few days. Each passing day, more beautiful scenes filled his eyes, but never took his focus off the light that brightly smiled at him each step that he took. So he didn't give up on his goals. That goal was touching that light. The conditions grew worse as he ascended higher. Any misstep could cause destruction for him. He pulled his clothes closer as the cold seeped into his garments. The light he sought grew so much brighter. Getting closer, he saw a figure at the crest of the high glacier holding aloft a light lamp. Unfortunately, I don't know what I did with my tarot cards that I usually pluck through the Rider Waite, which has the hermit with the lantern that he's holding. But I do have the Lightseer's deck. 
And it's a kind of a, it's not the same, but it's a very similar image where there's a little girl with the light on top of the mountain. Hand down, please, Mr. Computer. So we're seeing a very similar-esque type picture. But the old, if you, if anybody knows tarot, you want to look up what that picture is. It's an old man with a lantern holding it up on a mountaintop with very shining bright light. I like to get visuals when I can. Couldn't find my cards. Not happy about that. So the light he saw grew so much brighter, getting closer, he saw a figure at the crest of the high glacier holding aloft a lighted lamp. The figure was an old man, looks like the hermit from the tarot card. As the wind blew, his garments, which blew trails of white, the old man's sandals were in the snow. He held a staff leaning on it. The looks of this mystical branch seemed it was from the tree of light. The old man appeared exhausted, but the light being held up by his arm never wavered. Quote, in the lamp of old and tarnished brass spurred a mysterious flame. And from that flickering light, thousands of tiny rays, like winged creatures, streamed forth to disappear in the darkness of the great unknown, end quote. What do you think a lot of us on this earth plane are doing right now? Many of us are beacons of light, scattered alone and across this planet are the ones holding up the light holding the light for others to see not just the ethereal not just for the dead that are lost and need help but for consciousness at at its forefront a lot of us are those beacons of light and it's a lonely road the light rays went all over the world. The lonely one battled the elements, continuously climbing to reach the old man on the mountain with the light so bright. Finally, he reached worlds of curiosity. They did exchange. Quote, the old man gazing lovingly at his little lamp replied, the light thou seest is the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world, end quote. That's deep and heavy right there. Take and soak that in. The light I carry is the life of men. End quote. The old man proceeds to say he has dedicated his soul to light to be the light. He stands shining the light for, for the world to see as a reminder God is still here for all its children. Are you one of them? Because I bet many of you are. Seven sparks of light which shine upon the world. The lonely one asks why the old man is alone on the highest of mountains. The reply, quote, we are the sleepless, sleepless watchers of the destiny of world. 
may have these sparks of life. His torch from the dawn of time was lit by the altar of the cosmos and has never gone out. Through all the darkness and chaos in the valleys below can see. The only one offered to take the place of the old man to relieve him of the work that's cold and lonely. The skies and stars above danced around the lonely one. The old man can finally ascend to the stars where he can hold a brighter light. I'm going to put a pause there. In my own journey for my own self, I kind of discovered this. And when I read this, it made it a lot of resonance within my soul. I lived in New York, a very dark, bottomless pit and a void. I'm also a gatekeeper, was a gatekeeper, probably still am, to a stargate with things coming out of it, not of the light, but of the darkness. I was the light holding it back. And I got a call from upstairs that I needed to go. I needed to move on because my light needed to shine brighter somewhere else. And that someone else will take my place to hold that same frequency key and that light so that it's safe. And I now see as I'm driving around and getting my bearings still haven't fully explored here yet, how dark the energies are here and that my light is very much needed. And there's not many of me here where in New York, there is a hell of a lot of light workers and a hell of a lot of them are the strongest of beacons of light. And soon they're going to be called to move because the, the ones now ascending next step need to learn how to hold the frequency and the light. Can't do that when someone stronger is in that place. You can learn just that you can only learn so much, but you need the self experience to do it yourself. You need to go and do the inner work. You need to do the routines. You need to step into your own power. This is vital to be a beacon of light. You need to go through certain things in life. And this right there says it all for me. Even though I'm not going to heaven, six density or i'm not moving up i'm still here my purpose of my light coming here is a bit different from new york but it's in a higher calling and a higher purpose that makes sense and a lot of you might have that stirring at some point in time to it's time to move or it's time to go within and become a stronger brighter light and I think a lot more people are doing that inner work and having that inner knowing that they need to do some work to get brighter. Quote, we have never broken faith with man, nor with one another. And through dim ages that have passed, when even our names were used to curse our brother, we silent seven have loved those who have betrayed us, serve those who have ridiculed us, end quote. That also hit a lot of nerve and strength within me. 
I have a lot of people in my life that criticize me and paint me in a picture that I am not. People assume, suppose, and even think that things are what they seem that are not. I forgive them because they know not. I know what my mission is. No, nothing's going to stop me from getting it done. The old man walked away as he ascended to the stars in the firmament. Keyword. The lonely one could only watch with compassion in his heart. The brightest stars sparkled. The unselfish purpose filled life in him. As years grew, his heart trembled with past memories of all he knew in the valley below. The agony consumed him. Quote, dying for friendship and love. So literal on the mountaintop, he cursed the very hour that brought him into being. End quote. I've been in this place many, many times and I'm recent as well. And a lot of us are experiencing this right here. The difference is we have the veil of forgetting. We come here unknowing of our purpose, unknowing of the mission that we are seeking to do. A lot of us don't understand. We volunteered to come. Many of us of the higher realms came here with a purpose, but we incarnated into trauma, into family, into a story with karma, with past lives, with all this gunk. And not to say that stuff is bad or good or indifferent. It's just that was such a veil of things that we needed to overcome and heal and identify with. And it never, it's not going to end. Let's just be clear. I don't know too many people that could still not pick themselves apart and not have something to heal. Especially those that have grown up with a lot of trauma and a lot of suppressed memories that don't, that out of nowhere, something comes up and it's like, oh, this is something else I got to heal. Great. Right. We have the, we have within us to alchemize and transmute those energies and let it go. But we still have to experience that pain and trauma in order to heal it. And we all have become to our precipice. As our friend Dave from X-22 likes to say a lot. We all have a different points of break. We, many of us, have served source directly. And not to say everybody's serving source. Period. End of story. Some don't get to swivel out of their contracts. Where other people can renew a contract or kind of revise. Some people cannot. From my perspective. And sometimes we signed up not realizing how hard jamming every lesson in before we ascend to, to make sure that we're not stuck again. It's not easy. And we have, we're human, by the way, we're playing a human avatar. We're experiencing human life because this is what we needed to ascend again. And we unfortunately all have these breaking points where there are things that we didn't plan into our lives, but we wish we would have friendships, relationships. You see everybody around you getting hugged, everybody got at the dinner table at a restaurant and you're by yourself. That's me. You see everybody, you know, taking things for granted when you're there watching and like, how could you take that for granted? What's wrong with you? This is the things that a lot of us are going through right now. 
our souls are being stretched right now. We're moving into a new paradigm, a new consciousness. We already have our, our soul 2.0 that came in with us, born within us, is now merging outside into our what we're going to become. And we need to leave this child soul of ours that got us through the first part of our ascension part, got us through all the activations, all the learning, all the trauma. We need to kind of separate and let that guy go over here. And say, adios, we love you. Don't come back because this soul already knows everything and has all the memories, but this one's more mature and will guide us to the light and the pathway that we need to be in. And we're at this point right now where it's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're not ready yet to get to this guy. But this guy's still here and he's like, hi, mm -mm -mm -mm. we're playing tug of war and we're being stretched right now. And a lot of suppressed emotions, a lot of anger, a lot of nasty trauma is building up in people and they're taking it out on the wrong people. A lot of people are choosing to take the high road and just ignore which makes other people angry. Like, why are you ignoring me, bitch? When people are trying to help you and you pointing out what they're seeing and you get offended and triggered, maybe it's interesting to go and actually pluck and analyze why they said what they said. And it wasn't to upset you, it was to help you. See something within you that you might need to look into to heal. There's a lot going on right now in our paradigm. There's a lot of relationships, friendships, things that are breaking up and dissolving before our eyes. People who you thought had the best intentions for you, you find out are using you. You find out that they're taking some stranger's interpretation and words over yours i'm seeing way too much of this in the paradigm right now i made some comments about the award show the other day people are just right off the bat like ready to attack oh but no but no but no this is what it is i'm like could you just objectively not do that and just think about what I'm trying to tell you. Oh no, because this the arm is here and it, but, but, okay, but the arm still has definition, right? I went to art school. I drew naked people for six hours a day for four years. Okay. In all kinds of positions, all kinds of drapery, all kinds of different lighting. I'm not a moron. I see things that a lot of people miss you can change you can change it with contacts but usually when people get face to make themselves look different they still kind of look like them unless you're swapped out ear shape does not lie birthmarks don't lie masks don't lie people's words if you actually listen to some of those speeches and i'm going off on this because it's relevant i tried pointing these things out to people who are and but it it's all but no you're thinking your your conspiracy you know like you're you're thinking like them. It's like well no I'm thinking for myself and I'm having a perception, and I'm giving my opinion. I want you to think, what 
does it add up or doesn't add up? And if it does seem normal to you, you're not supposed to be aware. That's that's the beauty of life. Not everybody's going to be awake. And we're not going to be able to wake everybody up to the truth. We've been so diminished, so brainwashed. Those of the light, those who are ready to ascend, the souls that came in to volunteer to help raise the vibration of the planet, that came here to have a purpose and mission. And a lot of us are still like, we have little side quests. We don't know what the greater grand scheme of our mission is yet. We're not supposed to know yet. It hasn't formalized yet because time is fluid and things keep changing. Things are moving swiftly. Every action has a reaction. So as a collective, if everybody's buying into something and this is what is going to be manifested, we all have to deal with this manifested thought form. Whereas if we're all here focusing on all of us ascending together and then making a big jump and a giant leap forward, we all need to think about that collectively, how that's going to look and then create it, manifest it, put action into motion to get that done. But collectively, there's too many thought forms. There's too many distractions happening that this is taking place because so you don't know where your discernment is because you don't it's just too much right now so it's okay to get to this point where you're dying to have friendship you're dying to have somebody to love you you're dying to get out of the solitary confinement that you're being placed in but that is only placing you there so you have soul growth and it's very difficult. I'm living that every day of my life. And it's torture at times. Especially when I'm physically trying to do what I need to get done. And I can't because my body doesn't want to work with me. I mean, I have this huge bruise here. You should see my legs. It's gross. Anywho. The light in his hands dimmed. He couldn't move or escape. He prayed for mercy, begging the powers of darkness release him. He looked at the other peaks and his heart felt for them. The lonely man appeared and his heart grew warm again. The old man took the lamp once again for the light dimmed enough. In his sadness, a lot of tears fell and at once the lonely one made it to the valley. Nothing but desolation awaited. Quote, although he had returned to the world, he was not of the world. For his soul was still on the mountain holding the light. End quote. He was utterly broken. He awaited liberation. When a fellow lonely wanderer crossed his path, a renewed calm and urgency to get back on the mountain to finish his task came. He held the light once more. The glory of his own soul unfolded. That's huge. Many of us want to give up. Throw it out. Throw your hands up and say, I'm really done. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I've done this way too many times in my soul journey here. Many of you too are exhausted. It's one thing to be alone it's another to have all those ascension symptoms being human having hormones living in a very harsh world that 
everybody's out for themselves. Very few are for humanity. Everything's about this. And then if you talk about any of that, it's you're in lack mindset. Oh, you, you're lacking. You can get abundant. We should all be abundant equally. If you work for it. But we all should have abundance. We all should have the same opportunities as anybody else. It's up to you to take them and walk in that path. But there are some things that people do that would require no job title. Like me stomping and taking my drum outside and banging it and taking my tuning forks and taking salt and my sage. Like, yeah, you could, like, I don't want to get paid for that because that's off source. That's what I do to lighten the energy in a, in a, in a place. I meditate. Any one normal person would walk and go, what the hell is this girl doing? She's crazy. But people that are of the light know what I'm doing because they can see it with their third sights, their six sights, and their other senses. It's hard to get paid for untangible work. Let's just put it that way. And it's hard to know who's out there to scam you. a lot of them out there we're in a very deceptive world this story really highly resonated with me especially when i'm like physically going through right now emotionally going through being in a new place still not like yeah i'm home but it's not home just yet i have i'm anchoring my energy it feels right but it's just still very new and emotionally i have a hell of a lot of trauma to unpack it's not easy being in a place for your whole life and having to give it all away not all literally but um vast majority of everything away it's not easy doing it alone it's not easy not having family support it is not easy when you were hungry being ignored by the people that were supposed to be there for you so i too have walked out of my post as we all should sometimes take breaks from the spiritual work and ground ourselves to see the desolation around you to see really like the things that no longer serve you left they went bye-bye for a reason not because you don't more, better things are going to come it takes time it's all in divine timing and i keep telling myself that it's all going to be in divine timing I don't really get to choose as much as we do have free will. I really, the free will is the thoughts that are in my head, but they're not really mine because they're of source. The conundrums of spiritual work and thinking too hard. But I hope this story helped many of you who are tired, who are the light bearers, the beaming lights, the beacons, the lighthouses in your area, in your community, or your country. There are many of us in the silence. There are many of us now coming out and trying to look for the others because, hey, we aren't ever alone. We are physically sort of alone. But I mean, how many ethereal things do people tell me they see in my videos? Oh, I saw a spirit behind you. And I saw, I saw things going, blah, 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 blah. right? Like we're never alone. Energy never ceases to exist, to die out. It, it's always in constant motion and flow. It doesn't die. 
It's always here. It's just our eyes in this physical avatar that we chose just physically can't perceive it. I can perceive certain things. I can't perceive everything beyond the veil. Other people can, but other people can't see the things that I could see. We all come in with a unique abilities. Some are very similar to others and some are not, which is the beautiful thing about coming all together and everybody having a role in this journey. Everybody's role is, is as important as the next person. It's like being on that elevator. You got the negative polarity and you got your positive polarity. The people on the first floor are as important to the people on the top. And all the people in between on each of those floors are just as important because everybody's going through different learning mechanisms. But the person down here might have an ability that the person up here who already has done all that work might need. And it's important for the top people to come and help steer everybody on all the floors. It's a teaching, learning, teaching, learning, teaching, learning. We just all have to get better at finding each other. There's many of us. And I can't wait to learn and find more people like myself. Or different from myself, but understands where I'm coming from. I think it's very important. Hang in there. It's a lonely road and it's hard sometimes. Journal, read, I've been reading lots. I mean, I a lot of these books I have to reread and read. There's a lot of books behind me. I have a lot of reading to get done. This story, put yourself in this story. What is your breaking point? We all have it. We all have a precipice. Then it's to go in and transmute what we are feeling, why we feel that way. We are tired. So how can we make our time here better? What are the things that you enjoy on a daily basis that you could start implementing to make yourself feel better? Whether it be changing up the diet a little bit. Maybe you're on a diet and it's like, go, go, go. But sometimes you do need a cheat day. Sometimes you're in this, you're YOLOing, okay? You live once in this avatar. So make it the happiest experience you can. And sometimes indulgence in sweets or in, just don't overdo. Sometimes people are too lackadaisical in their daily lives. They're not willing to do the spiritual work. Sometimes we're too rigid and not willing to see the other possibilities that can make us happy. Life is all about balance. In this story, where can we find balance? As the beacons of light. As the ones holding the, the lamp. We all have missions to do this. We're not physically standing there with a staff and holding a light, but we're holding that frequency and that energy. Why is our light dimming and how can we expand so with that shine your bright shine bright shine your light bright be bold And don't give up. I'm still here. And it's tough 
some days to even get out of bed. But I still make it out of bed and I still try every morning, every day. Where are you at? Please write in the comments below your story. You can email me if you want to keep it private. All the links are in the description box. I really like to hear other people and their perspectives on these stories. You might not resonate with being a, a light beacon. You might not resonate, but something here might have triggered you into something. So I would love to know what it is. The more people that comment, the more people that communicate, the more people getting out their stories, more people are going to find you. It doesn't need to be me. When more people hear your experiences and can correlate to it, more and more people are going to gain the empowerment and stand up and be like, I can do this. I understand now. Different perspectives, different ways of seeing things help. My way is just, just the way I perceive things. It's just my viewpoint. But maybe your viewpoint, someone might resonate. So please share. Sending each one of you protection, light, love, and shielding. Don't give up. Be the beacons of light that you're supposed to be. Walk in your conviction. Walk in and be empowered with who you are. And don't let anything stray you off your path. Guess what? You're going to be on your path no matter what road you take. It's all going to lead to where it needs to go because you designed it that way. So hold out the hope and the faith and within yourself. This is very trying times right now. And I know all of you, it's a struggle. So just keep moving forward. Keep doing the inner work. Ground, meditate, put some good music on, dance, get down. Have a laugh, take a day off, reside in your head, read a book. Stop overstimulating yourself too. And I hope to see you on the next one, guys. Thank you so much. The next one should be really interesting. Bye, guys. Please have a safe week. Those in the Northeast, you might be getting hit with a blizzard or some bad snow and it sucks. So be please be careful. See you, see you guys.